Welcome back to Super Sentai Review, episode number 362. We're here reviewing the Magic Ranger vs. Deca Ranger movie. Movie starts out with the Magic Rangers basically celebrating, have a fantastic day. Uh, here with this like special jewel. And then on, on, on a table just across from them, we see this person there. We'll get back there. And then the rest gets lifted up by an alienizer. Yeah. By the way, the person in the is Umiko. And she's waiting for Sean. Yeah, the Decker Rangers all show up. And of course, like... Like, oh, it's a Decker Ranger. I'm not surprised that Mad Ranger knows who Decker Ranger is. Given the fact that they're public figures. People know who exactly these people are. Plus, these guys save the world. Just the previous year. So, yeah. They take down this alien thing, they arrest him, and then, like, oh, he gets shot by this other guy. Named Barbin. No, it's not, basically. Um, it's not Bond. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to him. And, like... There's a bit of nonsense relating to him in the movie. And there definitely is some cool moments. So. Yeah, it turns this guy working for a guy called Agent X. Which, they are in the movie, he's a hell beast. Who became an alienizer. You're like, What? Yes. How does a Hades beast become an alienizer? Apparently he went to space at some point and basically taught under Agent Abra. Yeah, he's mentioned the movie, but he does not appear because, well, the good reason. Agent Abra's dead. He got deleted at the end of Decker Ranger. Oh yeah, and then like, this is kind of weird, so... Okay, they chase into one of the monsters, and of course they, they have the Mad Ranger there helping out, and Big Ranger's going with them. And then Bond shows completely out of nowhere with a Battleizer. And blocking Kai. Yes. And here's the thing. He's supposed to fire Fire Squad, and I'm like, wait a minute. Fire Squad basically is different uniform. You see him here, out of the uniform, and it's the uniform we have from the season. Like, did either the, the suit he had at the end of the season was not available? Or something. So here's the thing. Apparently Ajax's real name is Hades Beastman Demon Apollos. That apparently is his real name. He's a cool looking villain and it's a shame this guy never popped up in, in Power Rangers. Because here's the weird thing. This team up was never adapted for Power Rangers. And the thing is, the previous team that was adapted was SPD and, and down, down Thunder. But for some reason, Sentai can have basically versions team up, but... Now Power Rangers are like, oh, they're in the future. Well, that would be true. Definitely. But, uh... Here's kind of the issue with that. They can do time travel. And they can probably explain that maybe uh, Dino Thunder may have explained who the heck these people are. Like, they may have mentioned it to... to they may have sent something to, like, Udana about these people. But nope. We never got a chance to see that. Uh, now, this, I, I do not know the reason for this. And of course, like, oh, is Mari in the... Who doesn't have his lock on his neck? He does reveal that, oh, this is a family that he failed to protect from Agent X. Which, by the way, this is the same family that popped up in the final episode of Decker Ranger. Now, he's supposed to be part of, of the Fire Squad. And I'm like, wait a minute, he got a new uniform. Why is he back in his Decker Red uniform? 
it, like the one he had in that season. This made no sense to me at all. So, by Birmingham, he already officiated for deletion. Which, uh, that would have been quite nice to see for people who have probably never seen out Decker Ranger. Like, it would have seen that again. By the way, do, do, do they pop, pop their, 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 their badges and do the whole guilt not guilty thing in this episode in the movie? Nope. That never pops up at all. By the way, Decker Base briefly appears in the movie. Makes total sense because it's basically Mind Ranger's time, not basically Decker Ranger's. And they go inside the house, which... Yeah, this that was really weird. How in the world that get this? Like six people who have no magical powers can walk through a magic door. Oh, and Swan knows basically the magic mother. How <coughs> they met at Dino Curry. Yep, they met at Dino Curry. Uh, Curry, which okay, that's like some of the good friends. And she also definitely suspected that, that Swan and Doug Cougar were a couple. They deny it, but yeah, they're they're clearly a couple. Yeah. So so at one point when before they get to the base, they get to the uh, base operations for Madge Ranger, Uda gets kidnapped. And Jazz follows them to Infasia, which is like the second time they've basically been there. Yeah. So, tries to free him, but she's stopped by, of course, the villains. Very easily, while she's in her swap mode, and thrown in the same cell. Now, if this, that was quite stupid. Like, swap mode was established in Decorating to be really, really powerful. Here, it's basically nothing. And by the way, Jasmine is one of two people in this whole movie who goes to swap mode. Well, actually, she's the only person who goes to swap mode. No one else does. Either the writer of the movie completely forgot the fact they had this damn mode. Yes, that's something quite weird. Like, they completely forgot they have this mode. So, okay, and also... Bon and Kai do not get along. And like like in the case of the first episode, because Bon is because basically Bon is a bit of an idiot, he gets punched by Kai. Oh yeah, and he also calls the Mad Rangers amateurs. I'm like, seriously? Especially one who's a holy saint? Which, by the way, they never mention about Haraku being a holy saint the whole movie. So I think the viewer know he's a holy saint. They don't mention that, oh yeah, he he's a holy saint. He's fighting for years. But what, what's everyone's plan? Get rid of all love and courage on the entire planet to make a hellscape. I'm like, okay, that's been original, but it sounds so stupid. Oh yeah, and why the heck you have this idea? Oh, he's following the plans. He's basically following. He's using the same trade. The age Abra used. Yeah, seriously. By the way, does he hire any, any goons like I Age Abra is over doing? By the way, for someone who's a, a follower of Age Abra, he apparently forgot to bring the the grunts. That would be nice to see these grunts again in this movie, but no, they don't appear at all. I'm like, did the producers movie forget the fact these things existed? We'll get back to that later on. So then they they go to this island which the two girls are at, and they have to swap for this uh, jewel. So get this: Deck a Break and Maggie Shine dress up as women, despite the fact they actually have some hot women. Like I get the fact that Uzma because she's short. You could I don't know ask I don't know Jasmine. She's very beautiful. Or you could ask I don't know. Haru. Heck, I wouldn't mind if they basically had Swan go undercover to give her something new. Nope. Let's have basically the two six rangers basically cosplay as women. So, they get on the island, and I love the moments they have. They have Umuko with Haru, 
we have the two cool two cool guys, Hikaru and and Tabusha. I love the fact these two. Yeah, here's the thing. We have we have we have the two blue. We have the me, two pinks, two greens, and blue and yellow. Which the only reason why is because Tabusha is yellow, not not blue, because blue is a girl. Yeah, this is also I think was the last season I could think of. I'm not sure, but this could have been like the last season where yellow. The Yellow Ranger was indeed a guy. This may have been the last one. As for Blue, I think this was the third ever one I could, I've heard of. That I've, actually, is the third? No, I think it was the fourth. Yeah, there have been four female Blue Rangers. There was Lob Man, Jet Man, Hurricane, and this one. So we have four Blue female Rangers. That's not bad. And I love all the body moments they have each other, like like Mikiko and Sean. They look great because fact like they both have siblings. Sean's got seven siblings. Mikito has got like four. And the fact they argue with each other. Like these two bond really well. And we got like, oh, we have Sean's headstand, which he doesn't show, which I am also kinda of glad now this is one thing the one thing about the headstand thing is every time they they show off in the in the show. They mention, oh yeah, he does this thinking pose, and Jasmine Esper because in the show they make him every single episode they do this stuff. Here it's like yeah, the writers probably suspect that the viewers are not stupid when it comes to these two things, so don't need narration. Which I'm glad, but there's other stuff here, so. So basically, well, they have like a brief, they even have it where uh, Doggy Kruger fights wars. I thought this was a really cool thing. Battling on Exploding Island, like this is so cool. And then like both escape, like apparently both escape off screen because like Doggy Kruger is seen standing on the Exploding Island and then he's seen in the credits perfectly fine. Was he cut here? Probably. So the Rangers themselves basically take the battle to space with a legendary Megazord and, of course, the Pat the, the Pat Swords. And they fire it at the thing drag it to Earth. And then they switch out the, the Pat Swords with Deca Robo, uh, Deca Bike Sword, uh, basically the four Megazords. Like, when they did this, this was really quick, and they battle them, and, of course, the thing is destroyed. And then they have their awesome, like, introduction thing that was really cool. Uh... Yeah, De Deck of Rangers is a bit long, but I'm glad they kept it in here. But it would be really cool also if they included Dog and Kruger in the shop. Because in the previous movie, when they team with Dive Ranger, D Dog Kruger was included in this. In this movie, nope, he wasn't. We see him morph, but that was really cool. Yeah, then eventually they have like, oh, they have this funny moment here where, okay, Veronica shows up here. So we have basically the girls go to this other dimension. So they turn to Knight and Mare. So first they use their Verizon phones to swap clothes with the SPD. Like, oh, these are nice, cool. And of course, I think it was Hakura's like, hmm, I want to try those clothes on too. And then they beat her by getting out of the dimension. By the way, she's, she basically has Mary and then she goes to Knight and Mary. So we have six women swapping clothes, and then it goes back to Veronica somehow. She ends up in a bathtub with rubber duckies, and she flies away. Okay, the the, the bathtub thing, that is a gag from Deca Ranger, where Umiko loves bathtubs, so somehow they create a freaking bathtub. Okay, that I thought was funny. Yeah, and this would been really cool, like, oh... Oh, and by the way, the bat the battle light is there that the Bond uses, it's Murphy. Somehow Fire Squire crested Murphy. I thought this was weird. Also, Umiko is well, she she's become well Decker Bryce become a partner. And also, get this. Despite the fact at the end of the previous show that he basically went the silver, he got his gold back. What? Yeah, they do explain that I got it back, but why? I thought he was permanently transferred, so he got him with the silver. Nope. Guys, go back. 
somehow they don't really explain how and well it'd be them and of course they have the celebration you have Bond and, and Kai show up their crushes of course everyone knows that Bond has a thing for Mari like confess to her already and same thing with Kai and of course like we doing it up he goes I had to wait because Mikita doesn't have a girlfriend yet even though he really does and it's a funny ending of course they have this wonderful in the ending with the flowers and the whole thing and by the way uh, Uma goes it, her when, when she first meets Smokey it's like he's a cat he's gross Smokey <laughs> and a talking plant I thought this was funny and how Swan gets in the room is weird like she used magic teleport to get in there somehow that part was never explained so it is a good movie but man oh man there is some plot holes in it let's do some up shall we uh, let's start with the fact that when the heck did they could break it back as gold? Oh, oh, he just got it back. When and how? Second of which, okay, Bond is part of Fire Squad, and yet they forgot his uniform that he wore at the end of the series. Because at the end of Decker Ranger, he got brand spanking uniform as part of Fire Squad. And here he's back wearing his Decker Red uniform. I'm like, okay. Okay, another thing. Number three. When did Murphy get requested to go to the fire squad? Number four. How did Gaudi Kruger get off the island even though he took the train off? Number five. When did Swan learn magic? Um, what else, what else, what else? Let's see. Mad Ranger, I found nothing really wrong with him per se. I think everything with him was fine. Nothing because of a show, but I'm trying to think was anything else. Um oh, another big one. When did they switch swords? Because they went through with the pat the pat wing and they came back where they're on Earth and they already got Deck and Robo. When the heck did they get this thing out? And when did Mad Ranger swim up? That that part was really odd. Let's see. Um, I don't think what else was it. Hmm. I can't think of anything else, but but yeah, that's gonna be well, pretty much it to talk about here. Uh, next time to do this will be talk about the last three episodes and on my break. So next up is two common corners, and then basically it's back to Mentor Ranger. Okay, next view. Bye. Oh. By the way, before, before I end this video, there is technically one movie that came out in the 2000s to discuss. That'll be after the show, okay?